Welcome to today's episode of the CNC Base Camp. Today is going to be fun. We're doing CNC carving. And it's really cool to see a CNC machine work on a carving on plastic, wood, or any of the other materials that the CNC machine can work with. Now today, I'm going to show you how to deal with plastic, and also we're going to talk about how to deal with wood. And today's project, it's a nice little stool. Every house needs one. Whether your kids need a little help to get up to the sink to brush their teeth, or you've got someone who's a little height impaired and can't reach that top kitchen cabinet. The stool's a great little project, so we'll show you how to make one and provide you with DXF files so you'll be ready to go. This episode is sponsored by Inventables. Design it, build it, sell it. Learn more at inventables.com. So let's start by going to the computer and I'll show you how to set up our first cut, which will be a work in acrylic plastic. And from there, we'll be back at the CNC machine and get started. Our dog plaque that we use the CNC machine to cut out of cast acrylic begins here. This is a website that sells clip art. It's 3D clip art for carving. And there are thousands of individual choices. As you can see here, I've brought up a number of different variations of a dog, a Springer Spaniel. This is proprietary art, so it does cost a little bit of money, but once you've paid for it, it's yours to use over and over again. For this application, I've chosen Style B, the dish style of the English Springer Spaniel. Once we've downloaded our artwork, we can then bring it into the program that we use to set up our cutting routines and generate the G-code. This is Vectric VCarve Pro. I've gone ahead and set my material at 12 by 12 inches by 11 sixteenths of an inch thick, which is the dimensions of the acrylic plastic that I'm using. I've imported the dog clip art in and I've sized it to fit the material. The clip art can be made larger or smaller, deeper, or shallower and can be pulled in the X or Y axis so you can work with it to fit the particular space that you have. In this case I've chosen simply just to make it larger than it imported in. Once we're happy with the size and look of the clip art we can then focus on setting up our tool paths. For a 3D carving tool paths begin with what's called a roughing cut. The roughing cut uses a quarter inch bit and, as the name implies, it simply hogs out a lot of excess material. There are a number of choices to be made and finally we hit calculate. And as you can see, the blue lines that run across the screen represent the pathway of the router bit and it's taking off a lot of the material. The second tool path that we need to set up is a finishing cut. The finishing cut is going to use a 1 16th inch tapered ball nose bit. And that's a very common bit for carving work that requires a bit of detail. This pathway is going to be what's called a finishing cut. We basically go through the same series of choices. We choose the bit. There are different boundaries that the bit can cut to. In this case, a circular pattern at the edge of the clip art. We can choose the, the offset, in other words, the step over that the router bit is going to take. And finally, once again, we hit calculate. Now, as you can see, there's a lot of lines there. They all overlap, so it pretty much looks like solid blue. But the blue represents the pathway of that router bit. Now, to put it in context, a 1 16th inch bit that's been set up with approximately a 12% step over well, that creates a lot of paths. Once I have the pathways done, I can also set up a profile, as you can see here, to cut out the finished piece. Once I'm happy with my tool paths, I can then save them, download them, and they'll be ready to use on our CNC machine. Well, now that we're done setting up our work at the computer, it's time to get the machine running. As you can see here, I've got a piece of three-quarter inch cast acrylic for our dog medallion. I'm going to go ahead and just leave the protective film on the plastic. 
I like to keep it as protected as possible until we're all the way done. Now, as you know, with a lot of projects, we use tabs to keep the project centered and in place in the motherboard as the machine does its work. Well, tabs are problematic with this project because with plastic, it's tough to cut the tabs off and to smooth the perimeter of our work and get it to really look good. I'd rather have a nice, clean CNC cut. So what I've done here is I'm using double-sided tape to hold everything in place and I'm going to forgo the tabs and let the machine cut all the way through. And that way, a nice clean edge. And there is our completed acrylic dog plaque. Our project for today is a step stool. And the first thing that I did was to model it in a 3D CAD program. In this case, Autodesk Inventor. I've created individual parts, a top, two legs, and two rails. I've also created all the joinery necessary for this project to be strong and solid. On the end of the leg, you'll see there's a recess here. In another program, I'm going to add a piece of 3D clip art, in this case, a honeybee. Once I'm happy with the proportions, the size, and all the joinery work in this program, I'll take each individual part and create a DXF file. The DXF file is a vector file, and I'll import that into vCarve Pro in order to set up the cuts. So here we are in vCarve Pro. What you see here is the outline of one of the legs. Also, you'll see in the center I've imported a B, and I've worked with the size, the shape, the composition, and fitted it in nicely to that area. These rectangular blocks on either side are actually the inside of the leg, and that represents a pocket which we will cut, which is part of the joinery for the rails. The cuts are set up in a way very similar to what we did with the acrylic dog plaque. The only difference is that the bits that we're going to be using in the CNC router are different. Acrylic plastic calls for a different geometry in the roughing bit and the finishing bit, but otherwise they're set up the same. You can see here I have a roughing cut, I have a finish cut, which will cut out the B, and then there's a profile cut for the perimeter, and finally a pocket cut, which will be cut on the opposite side to create the joinery for the rails. Once all my cuts are set up, I'm going to save them to a flash drive, we'll bring that over to our CNC router, and start making all the parts for our stool. Now that we have the design of our bee stool set, I've got a quarter inch bit in my machine and we are ready to proceed with the roughing cut for the bee carving.
Well, we finished carving the bee, and we finished cutting the profile for this leg. But there's another thing we need to do. This is a finished leg here, and you can see on the back are two pockets that have been cut to receive the rails of our bench. So, we need to flip this piece over and register it. To do that, I'm simply going to line up the shape of my leg with the profile that the bit has left in the spoil board. No reason to re-zero the router bit since we've nearly flipped our workpiece over again. So I'm going to go ahead and pull up the file and we'll cut these pockets. Well, we have three parts left to complete, the top and two rails. Now the top will receive a pocket for the tenons and the legs and a pocket for the rail. And then it will receive a simple profile cut for the rectangular shape. The rails themselves are super simple. We're just going to cut the profile out with the CNC machine and then it's on to assembly. Well, we've got all our parts cut on the CNC. I've got a top, I've got two legs, I've got two rails. Now one thing, the router cuts these mortises with rounded corners. It cuts the tenons with nice sharp corners, so it's pretty much a case. If we try and put this together, it's going to be a square peg in a round hole, and that's not going to work very well. So what I need to do to make the joinery fit is that I need to take a trim router with a 1 8 inch radius bit. And I'm using a solid pilot bit here because it gets in tight corners. And I'm going to go ahead and round the edges on my tenons. Now, as long as I've got the router in hand, I'm also going to use it to soften the edges on the leg as well. Now, with these corners rounded over, we should be in good shape. It should be a good fit. Well, it looks like it is. So, time for some glue. I'm going to start by going ahead and gluing my rails in first to my legs, and then I'll set that assembly onto the top. All right, I think we've got it all glued up. So I just need to be patient and let the glue dry. Then I'll take the clamps off, sand it out, and I'll give it a couple coats of a nice oil finish and it'll look great. One issue you can have with CNC carving is that sometimes there's a little bit of fuzz left at the base of the carvings. And that's true of wood, and it can also be true sometimes with plastics. So how do we deal with that? Well, now as you know with wood, there is just no end to the number of little sanding gizmos that are being sold out there. The trouble with sanding the wood is you're eventually going to remove the detail that gives the carving its life. Well, what I have found the simplest way, the best way to remove those little fuzzies that get left is to use a brush. Now for wood, I like a Palmera brush. So this is made out of the coconut palm. And all you need to do is sort of scrub into the wood. The fibers are stiff. The ends, instead of wearing smooth, tend to fragment, so they always have a little bit of sharpness to them. Now, it takes a few minutes of scrubbing, but you're going to be left with a clean carving that's ready to finish. Now, for plastics, I like a stiff, polypropylene brush like this. 
really works well. The final tip I have for you is keep your brushes clean. Don't make the mistake of taking your good brush and cleaning up around your bench grinder because whatever this brush picks up, you're going to grind it into the wood of your carving. And I can tell you from experience, the bench grinder, carving, it'll turn it absolutely gray. So keep your brushes clean and use them only for cleaning up your carvings. I really enjoy my CNC router. But I also really enjoy hand tool woodworking, particularly hand wood carving. Now, this may seem a little odd to hear, but your CNC router can help your hand tool wood carving. Let me give you an example. So last Christmas, I decided to make some really nice little gift boxes, and I wanted a carved echinacea flower on top, and I had to make about eight of them. Well, of course, time passed, and it was getting late November. How am I going to make these things? And then it came to me. I went ahead and used my CNC router, found a piece of clip art, and it had the router go ahead and just do the rough out pass for the echinacea flower. Well, that helped me out a bunch because it established basic shapes, took out the waste, it established the form, and it let me go straight to my wood carving tools and begin establishing the center of the flower, the petals, the undercutting, everything that makes hand wood carving special. So I saved time, I finished my gifts, and my CNC router was a big reason why. So if you'd like to save a little time with some wood carving work, or if you're a beginning wood carver and you need a little bit of help establishing the basic rough form, consider using your CNC router. So your CNC router is your friend in hand wood carving. This episode is sponsored by Inventables. Design it, build it, sell it. Learn more at inventables.com.